Hey guys, what's going on? Be sure to subscribe to The Corporate Game. You're gonna love that channel. Links below. All right, I've been trying to get a handle on Christmas because here's the thing. If you look into the numbers, we're technically not in a recession. We had upper economic growth, technically. And I've been diving into holiday sales numbers. Um, it is said, you know, in various online reporting um, agencies and outlets that in-store sales only went down 1.8%. I want you to hold that number in your head, hold that number. 1.8%. And online sales went up 18%. Okay? Keep those numbers in your head. 1.8% in-store sales went down and online sales went up 18%. I got really curious. So I went back to 2015. Online sales were like 620 billion and holiday online holiday sale well no holiday sales total in store and online was about 620 and from 2015 it went from 620 to 2020 to 755 billion dollars now if you well, let's kind of get into some nerdy stuff here if you get into demographics we add about three to four million people to the population every day not every day every year and we have x amount of people who died and looked that up but I'll, I'll bring that up in a further in a upcoming video so what we're having is more people are being born than we have dying so our population exponentially continues to increase right so this is one of the reasons that the holiday sales number keeps ticking up because we have more people every day uh, I think every month three to four million people turn 18 so they become legal adults able to engage in credit cards and contracts and all these other stuff so we add these people to the economy right and they're already in the economy because as kids they're still spending money but one of the things and this was a comment in one of the videos it's like your numbers are a little off because holiday sales have gone up so i really started to dive into the numbers because once again keep this in mind 1.8 percent decline of in-store sales and 18 percent increase in online sales right and the numbers aren't fully in so we'll have to wait until next year to really get these numbers but something interesting happened in 2020 Holiday sales went up 33%. Now, why do holiday sales go up 33%? You're smart, you've been watching this channel. You know what I'm gonna say? Stimulus money. This was when the CARES Act was in effect. This is when people were getting an additional $600 per week. And there was um, stimulus checks and the employment, and there was a lot of stimulus money both on the consumer side and the business side, the economy, there was trillions and trillions of dollars floating around in the economy. So this would be expected that holiday sales would tremendously be up 33%. Now, 33% in holiday sales this year have gone up 18%. So if you're looking, cause like you can Google this, you can Google holiday sales from 2015 up to 2021, and you will see year after year after year it grows, right? So we went up 32% this year, and then we only went up 18%. Well, we went up 33% last year, and we only went up 18% this year. Hmm. If you're looking at it from a trend, that is a downward trend. If you go from 2015, 2016, 17, 18, 19, and looking at the holiday numbers, this is a downward trend. This means that the real marketplace forces of the economy are starting to come into play. Now, I, and this is why I titled this video, Fuzzy Numbers. 
we're technically not in a recession on the technical numbers. However, are we counting all of the numbers? Because right now, and this is something that I did. I remember 2015. Uh, I remember being in Target on Christmas Eve. Target on Christmas Eve. The store was packed. There was lines at every register. Yesterday, I went to not one, not two, not three, but four Targets. They were almost empty on Christmas Eve. Now, once again, yes, the trend is to buy stuff online, but you cannot do last minute shopping online. These stores were empty. Some of the employees were just kind of standing around scratching their, their heads. These stores were empty on Christmas Eve. And I kind of drove around and I noticed there wasn't a lot of traffic. Now understand a lot of places close early on Christmas Eve, but stores typically stay open at least six, sometimes seven. And this was at 3.30, 4 o'clock. There wasn't a lot of traffic. People weren't out. People weren't out. So I believe that the decline in in-store sales of 1.8% is a fuzzy number. I think it's an enhanced number because looking with my eyeballs and going to the stores and look and driving around and seeing that these stores were kind of empty on Christmas Eve. Like how many times have you gone to the store on Christmas Eve and you were dreading it because you knew it was going to be packed. There was no crowded parking lot. There was no waiting lines. Uh, there was registers that were open. This is on Christmas Eve. So I believe that 1.8% decline is a fuzzy number and I'm about to give you some more evidence. What do we already know? Take what we already know and compare it against what we're being told. Right now, as, as I do this video, there are hundreds of ships off the coast of California with goods on them, hundreds. And off the port of Florida, a similar situation, the port of Georgia. This is a similar state situation that fully 50% of all of the goods and services come through California, 50%. So we got all these container ships with all of these goods just sitting on the water. How can in-store sales only be down 1.8% when they can't get their inventory? They can't get their inventory. Like now I got cars, I'm waiting on parts. They can't get their inventory. So what are they selling? I believe that is a fuzzy number based upon what we already know, based upon going out, looking. And also I'm going to say something. I live in an affluent neighborhood and this was the case in an affluent neighborhood. Now, once again, the rich people, they've already did their Christmas shopping there. They weren't, you know, they already, they were good. So they weren't going to be out there and doing this last minute shopping traditionally. So I believe we are being confronted with a bunch of fuzzy numbers and based upon the information that I can Google and get right now, we're on the downward trend, which is in alignment with all the other videos that I produce because I'm just sitting here like Christmas Eve to go. And you know, normally Christmas Eve is pandemonium. You, you dread going to the store because they're packed and they're overwhelmed. And it's just nothing but crowds. And also some other comments that there, there were no Walmart fights this year. Typically every year you could Google it. You will see pandemonium at Walmart. Didn't happen this year. There was nothing, nothing crazy at Target this year. So across the board, Online sales are down where they should be because if we had a 33% increase last year of online sales, we should be at 30 something or 40 something this year for us to be less than 30 something percent means we're going down because this is, you know, you, you really have to do the research and look at all the numbers. You just can't look at one set of numbers. Like I went back to 2015, all the way to the 2020 and we're being confronted with a bunch of fuzzy numbers. I believe that we are already in a recession and I'm going to explain why I believe that we're in a recession. 
we're in what I will call a segmented recession. Okay. Now I talk about the, the, the worst people, the lower social economic demographic of worthless people, right? That is a segment of the society. That is a segment of the economy. So I believe that they're picking and pulling numbers from certain segments and they're not totaling up the overall sentiments of the economy. So that's why it's from a technical analysis standpoint, we're not in a recession, but from a physical reality, crimes going up, businesses are struggling to hire workers that impacts productivity that dramatically impacts productivity. So we've got businesses that cannot make the money that they normally would make because they can't get the help that they need. That's an overall impact. This is why I believe we're in a recession right now. This is why I believe that you're seeing so many people turn to crime because they're desperate. It's really, really bad. And for us to be here on Christmas time. Now, once again, you know, you can go ahead and fact check me, Google all these numbers and you will see that the trend because the trend from 2015 up to 2020, it was year after year increase in holiday sales. Once again, our population every year increases three to 4 million people. That's a lot of people per year. Cause you know, in five years, that's 15 million people. That's a lot of people. So once again, you know, to get a little nerdy, um, there's this book called Upside and it talks about demographics and demographics are very, very important, right? So when we get with the demographics of the population, like I, once again, just, just, just rock out with me. I am thinking of creating a service and this is kind of a little departure. I'm thinking about creating a credit repair agency because you know, there's a hundred million people with a credit score lower than 620. That is a massive demographic, massive demographic. You want to know why? Because we have a population of, as of yesterday, 333 million people, right? Out of those 330 million people, fully a hundred and something million are not eligible for credit. So literally half of the eligible credit uh, gaining popu uh, population of, uh, you know, let's say we have a hundred million people with good credit and we have a hundred million people with bad credit. So essentially half of the credit able to establish credit population has bad credit. We're talking a hundred million people. Cause I, I was, like I said, I've been doing a lot of research and I was just blown away that a hundred million people have a credit score less than 620. That's substantial. That is a massive demographic. It is a staggering demographic. And if we will take what has happened in the last two years, that demographic has grown. It has grown. It's gotten bigger. There are more people in it. That's a growing demographic. And if you're starting a business, once again, rock out with me a little bit. That's the kind of business that you want to target. You want to target a demographic that is growing because that means your market share, your market, the available market for you to sell your product or service to is growing, which means more money, more money, more money to quote in living color from back in the, I believe the eighties, more money, more money, more money. So we take that once again, and I'm going to get back on track. We take this hundred million people because essentially, if you know the numbers, there's 160 million people purportedly working and we have 333 million. So that means to have a bunch of kids that are not working and we have older elderly people who have opted out of the, the workforce. So essentially, literally half the country supports the other half of the country. So when you put in there and once again, this hundred million people with bad credit, they're not able to fully participate in 
the credit economy because they, they can't do it. All they're eligible for these low limit BS credit cards, you know, 200, 300, 500 dollar limits. They really can't participate. So that's another drag on the economy. That is a big drag on the economy because one of the things that you have to look at for an economy to grow, to be productive, is everyone being able to participate. And because you have 100 million people with bad credit, they can't participate in the credit economy, getting credit cards, buying houses, buying cars, getting, they cannot participate. And that is a huge drag on the economy. And once again, these last two pandemic years, that number has gotten bigger. So when we start to look at this, not as snapshots, because this is what you do. And this is one of the things, and this is why I don't really talk about the stock market because people look at the stock market like right now. It's like, all right, the stock market went up today. The stock market went down. Last four weeks, the stock market has been acting kind of nuts. It's been going down. But for you to get a real feel for the stock market, you have to look and see what the stock market has done for the last five years. You cannot look at a few weeks or a few months. You have to look at it from years. And this is the same way that you have to look at this demographic information. That's why I went back to 2015 and I worked the numbers. And I'm here to tell you we're in a segmented recession. Now, what does this mean? There are some people who are doing well. I'm in the building full of people who are doing well in the garage. I don't know if I'm gonna put a picture in here. I may remember to put the picture in here. I, I forget to do these things. Someone got a brand new Mercedes. It was brand new, uh, 2021 or maybe a 2022 with a big red bow on it. It was in there. It was in the garage. So there is a segment of the society that is doing amazingly well. And there's a segment of society that's doing very, very badly. There's a segment of society that is struggling. There's a segment of society. There ain't no Christmas. There's no Christmas presents. There wasn't a Christmas tree. There was no stockings. There was no decorations. There was nothing. And for, I'm going to say about 120 million people, this may have been the worst Christmas ever. Worst Christmas ever. And also, I haven't even gotten into the segment of when companies are laying off people because typically I, I haven't done their research. So I'm not going to speak on that. But if you're looking at the numbers from a historical standpoint, this is shaping up to be the worst Christmas on sale, like the Black Friday sales. That was a signal. And once again, the, the country is starting to operate on real economic principles. And something else that happened with the Omicron variant between yesterday and today, 5,000 flights were canceled. So right now, there are a ton of people stranded across airports across America because flight crews are getting sick. Now, as we move into 2022, we've got that to contend with. We've got the supply chain situation. We've got businesses who cannot hire people that they need, so they cannot be at full operating capacity. So they're losing money because they can't find people to do the work. We're just setting the stage for the recession of 2023, because once again, I believe that we're in a segmented recession right now. I believe we're in, a, and some people would call it a depression. Some people would call it a depression, and I'll probably do a further video on that because like I said, if you're just looking at snapshots of the economy, there are certain segments that are fine. Like with the um, stimulus money, Uber drivers were balling out. Door driver, door dash drivers were balling out. They were balling out because of all that stimulus money in the economy. Now that the stimulus money is gone, we're now looking at the naked economy. It ain't that pretty. I feel that these trends are going to continue and exacerbate for 2023. And I will be doing the report in 2023 on the holiday sales numbers because this year is going to be really, really funky. It's going to be really, really funky. And for some people who are well positioned, who have high skill sets, who have really good jobs, it was a great Christmas. It was a great Christmas. 
You know, you're making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Your wife's making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. You're a, a STEM employee. You're doing something extremely technical. You probably took the last two or three weeks of the year off because you work in that kind of field, and you and your wife have plenty of money, plenty of money. And you're, since that's what you do, and that's who you hang out with, your friends are doing similar things. So you're at. The Capitol Grill or Ruth's Crisp or Howl's or some fancy place and you're holding up wine glasses and you're toasting to you the world is perfect there's nothing wrong because <laughs> you don't feel it and you don't really know anyone that's in that situation so you know if I was to go up and ask one of those people it's like how was this year it's like man it's the best year of my life Best year of my life. Make more money. Got more opportunities. I'm enjoying myself. Man, I'm getting ready to take a trip. You know, once the, we, they lift some of these restrictions, I'm, I'm getting ready to go to London. And then I would talk to someone in the lower economic strata. And they're like, man, I don't have food for groceries. I don't know what we're going to do. So the polarity, like it's a it's a cliche. The rich get richer and the poor get poor. I feel that this effect is more pronounced now than ever before. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Because, you know, with my video where I was wrong about, you know, ec economic upward mobility, I'm looking at environments and networks and the resources. And I feel, like I said, I feel that we're in a recession some people would call it a depression right now. It just depends upon what segment of America you live in. Because if you're in that highly technical, well-groomed, highly paid job, skill set job, America's great. Because you know, you make 250, your wife makes 250, y'all have no problem affording a house, none whatsoever. You by yourself with your 250 salary can afford a house by yourself without your wife's income. But if you're in that, and once again, the income is very, very important because once we look at those people, the 160 million people who are in the workforce, 80 million of those people make less than $30,000 a year. 80, fully half of the workforce makes less than $30,000 a year. And then when you move it up to 50,000, 75%, I don't know what those numbers are, 75% of those people make less than 50,000 a year. 75% out of 160. So we're gonna say 30 million Americans are doing well, really well from an economic standpoint and the rest are just getting by. Because when you start to really look at the numbers and you start crunching numbers and looking at data, it literally blows your mind because men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. They tell you the tell. And based upon the numbers that I looked at, we're trending towards a downward economic situation in America. That's the trend. And trends can be very, very, pervasive so for a lot of people you know like for me i'm not a big christmas person you know at one point i was feeling a little christmas spirit and you know i got really busy and i didn't put up lights and i didn't have a tree up you know um so for me christmas is just another day but i don't have little kids i have a feeling if i had little kids christmas would be a bigger event for me than it is now because to me it's just another day um, once again, you know, just another day. But for many people, and I went out this morning and I, I rolled around and there was hardly any traffic, which I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed that because it's nice because this is Atlanta. And then when I came back, traffic was starting to thicken up. I was like, oh, here we go. So for a lot of people, CVS is open. Walgreens is open. They're open today. They've been open since this morning. And I have a feeling that a lot of other businesses are gonna be open. Uh, Costco, I believe is closed because I gotta pick up some prescriptions there. I'll pick those up either Sunday or Monday. 
But guys, we're trending toward a very bad economic situation when you look at all of the numbers. And thank you to the person who was like, hey, you know, uh, your numbers, because if you're just looking at those static numbers, we look fine. America looks good. Christmas sales, online sales up 18 percent. In-store sales only down one. Per those look those are some nice numbers. But when you look at the collection of data going back for five years, those numbers absolutely suck. But you, you cannot look at the economic data in a snapshot. You cannot. You have to look at it at five and 10 and 20 and 30 year chunks because the American economy is like a 22 trillion million, like holiday sales of, you know, I think last year was 755 billion. That's only a small part of a $22 trillion economy. It's only a small part, very, very small part, but it can be a really profitable, lucrative part for, um, you know, certain companies if they're positioned correctly and they're, and they're, they're managing their capital and their money correctly. But yeah, man, it's looking pretty bad. It's looking really bad. And once again, I contend that we're in a segmented re recession because once again, you got to look at, and that's why I call them fuzzy numbers. Who's putting out these numbers? Where are we getting these numbers? And what agenda do these people who are putting these numbers have out? Because years and years ago, and this is a departure from what I'm talking about in this video, that in 2011, 42% of the children in America were born out of wedlock. I feel that number is over 50%, maybe 60%. Now, what does that mean? That means that over half the kids in America are born in homes without present fathers. That's staggering. That's a staggering demographic. And I can tell you from what I know that that simple fact that the people who are building prisons and like I said, prison stocks are going to be bananas, I feel, because the number of kids growing up in a house without a father, the chances of that kid becoming incredible go up like 20 percent, like 20 times, not 20 percent, like 20 times. There's a 20 X factor. that The child born in a house without a father can end up in incarceration. So that's a whole nother video. But back on topic. So what was your Christmas like? Did you buy online? Did you buy in the store? Where did you spend your money? Did you spend more money than you normally spend? Did you uh, spend a lot or did you cut back? Did you have a situation where, hey, we ain't buying presents? What was your situation? Please let me know in the comments because I feel, because essentially, you know, I feel this is really good for me that I'm doing all this research and get into this economic data because it is going to lead me to make better business decisions because I haven't made up my mind, but I am, I am so close to, I'm going to create another business to serve those hundred million people with bad credit. I mean, it's, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy, but I, I'll, I'll get into that later. But yeah, holiday sales are, and this is one of the reasons, if you notice, I didn't do any Black Friday sales. I didn't do any Thanksgiving sales. I didn't do any sales for Christmas. Um, Cause typically I have a whole different business strategy and I'm not selling a commodity or something normal or something uh, that you can just go and get, right? So once again, let me just go ahead and tell you guys what's coming in 2022. Um, the new channel, the corporate game is going to be for my more high end customers because I get people like that. And then Hustlers Kung Fu, which the name of that is probably going to change, is going to be for most of you. Because I realized that most of you don't have a lot of money and most of you don't have the money that you need to start a business. You just don't have it. So once again, 
since you know like i said this is really really good for me that i'm doing all this research and diving into the demographics and that so i am going to create a program just for you people and it's not going to be as expensive as the corporate toolbox or the corporate papers because frankly you don't have the money and then two you need guidance on the things that you need to do to build your business because I've been consuming a lot of YouTube content every day. I walk for an hour on the treadmill and all I do is just consume YouTube content, watch videos, and I'm seeing a trend. People are creating videos to get views, which is good. I do the same thing. I'm not going to knock those folks. However, the information that gets views, like I'm about to go, I'm not mentioning any names because I'm not starting any YouTube beefs this year. I am not going after anyone, no more apex predator. I'm just going to focus on creating the best content based upon my research and analysis and presentation that I can. And there's a lot of people going for CPNs, age corporations, because once again, remember, there's a hundred million people with, see, I didn't understand why all of these credit channels were doing so well. I had no clue that that demographic was that huge. Now I know I was like, ah, oh, now that makes sense. Now that makes sense. Now I understand why his channel blows up. I understand. And so I'm going to create an educational curriculum because here's something that many people don't know. It is true that people get wealthy using other people's money. It's true. But name me one billionaire that got rich off of credit cards. Name me one. See, when let, let's have this conversation because we're this is a departure from the main topic. But let's take the company Glossier run by Emily West. She went ahead and she put together a proposal and she went to uh, Westwood Partners. Like it's a uh, capital investment firm run by a woman. And she got a million dollar check. That's other people's money. She got a million dollar check. And as her company grew, she took on rounds of funding other people's money, not lines of credit, not credit cards, but actual infusions of cash. Oh, here's 50 million. Oh, here's a hundred million. So yeah, it's true that some of the biggest corporations in America got wealthy in there from other people's money, but they didn't get there from lines of credit and credit cards. <laughs> it happened. It happened. I mean, I see this stuff over and over again. And as a YouTuber, I understand messaging. So if you see, YouTuber after YouTuber after YouTuber saying, oh, other people's money, use other people's money to get rich. OK. If you're creating a company and this is stuff I'm going to cover on the corporate game and you can get someone to give you 10 million dollars. That's other people's money. Totally different than a line of credit, totally different than a credit card that low level funding we're going to call that low level funding which can help you which can help you grow your business it can but it's not to be confused or mistaken with the kind of funding that these billionaires are getting elon musk i think sold 18 billion dollars worth of stock and i may even do a whole video on that because uh, there's a reason that he did that I think Elon knows that Tesla's value is about to go down and he's liquidating while he can, because even after paying $11 billion in taxes, he still got 8 billion cash, $8 billion cash. That is generational wealth money right there. That is money that can provide for the next 20 generations of Musk. Elon Musk don't have to do nothing else in life. He don't have to do nothing else. He is good. He is Gucci right now. So 
one of the things and i may do a whole video about that because i may do that on the corporate game because one of the things i'm doing if you haven't noticed is i'm segmenting my content like this channel is about the broader economy and trends and stuff and that's only thing I'm, I'm not doing youtube beefs i'm not doing disc videos none of that stuff i'm just going to focus on pure economic content because i like it i think it's fun i think it's fascinating because when you start to look at the numbers and stuff but yeah we're in for some rough times based upon the economic data that I'm interpreting and I'm looking at. And once again, segmented America, we've got the segments. And like I said, that number of a hundred million people with a credit score less than 620, that blew my mind, man. That blew my mind. That blew my mind. I, I had no clue. So this is why all of these credit channels and like if you put Navy Federal in your video, the video is gonna blow up. So this is one of the things. And this is something else too. We have not run into a credit crunch at the moment. They're still dishing out credit like candy. I feel at some point that's gonna change, but we will see. But yeah, guys, I think we're in for a rough ride. And what I'm gonna do in my part is to drop the specific content on the specific channels to help you win. Because I feel if you're informed with the truth and you really know what's going on, you will make better decisions for yourself and your family. So that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know your opinions and stuff in the comments and I will see you in the next one.